I sort of can't believe we're finally here, actually. <laughs> Rather strange to be welcoming people to the Bakery Bear Cottage. <laughs> How exciting! about Roman Britain. Cool. First one today is here at Pierce Bridge. Second one will be at Chester's Roman Fort. And the third will be at Walltown Crown. Well, there I'm is. going to hazard a guess and I think... <laughs> <laughs> That's totally not Molly's surname. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I changed it? I've travelled from one side of this galaxy to the other, and I've never found any yarn shop that stocked the full range of the Opal Harry Potter colourways. <laughs> you need to hold that trigger there. This one, yeah. Wait till it wears and then press the trigger. Yes! <gasps> this is really what that is. Alright, yeah. Come on. Do we win today? Yeah, yeah. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah, what are you up to? Um, we're knitting. We're knitting? <laughs> oh, brilliant. We're yeah. doing, we're doing... Susan B. Anderson? What's on your needles? It's Susan. Well, I have a few. <laughs> I'm here. He retired down there in Thirlby to the church where he got married. We're going to try and to own one, of course, Mrs. Pumphrey's house. Um, we'll also find out the real name. Wonderful name's. spiral staircase. So we're now in the heart of the monastery at Tynemouth Priory, and this is the Prior's Chapel. Everybody, to are you ready for this episode 100? Oh my goodness! Oh, I find it very, very difficult to look backwards. I've been finding it particularly hard. Yeah. That the last 24 hours, I don't know why. Right. I think it's because, well, I hope, I really hope that you enjoyed that little extended opening. Oh yes, we just took that as the opportunity to just have a little reminisce and look back at some of our favourite little bits from the, the last, well, it's 99 shows, isn't it? Because I today is the 100th show. Yes. Well, no, but there was a little bit at the end that was from today's show, so it is yeah. the last 100 yeah. shows. Yeah. Yes, no, that's good. That's nice and rounded. I like it. But, yeah, I find it, I find it tremendously difficult to look backward, and I think that's for obvious reasons. Uh, but, uh, actually, you know, I was also thinking how fortunate it was that I got cancer. Because if I hadn't, a hundredth episode would not have fallen on That's true. Our pod our podcast anniversary. That's true. Which yeah. is, I mean how unbelievable is that? That is weird actually. Isn't That's it? unbelievable, isn't it? That because it's of that falling. break yeah. because of that enforced yeah. break when I was having chemo, I mean it's like fate was yeah. was pulling the that strings. That's very strange. To make Everything sure. happens for a reason. It absolutely I does. I truly believe in that. It absolutely does happen for a reason. And, you know, just going through that process of putting together that little opening, it, it opens doors which I've closed off. Yeah. And I suspect you have also closed off. Probably not as closed as you. I have... Well, now I'm going to close... Doors tend to open with me quite easily, but, yeah. Now I'm going to close them again. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair, they were just ajar for a little bit. Fairly rapidly. Because strangely, t today, you know, I used to say to you that I used to, you know, when I was out running, I found it very cathartic and mm. I used to get really upset. Well, it nearly happened again today. Mm. Mm. Seriously. No, I believe you. I just sometimes, you know... And, do you know what I, I think... had to do? I just had to go, right, fo focus on the here and now. Yeah, which is what we say all the time, don't we, and what we try and do. But I think it's difficult because sometimes it's nice to look back on things, isn't it? But then I, I, I don't know that it really does, does any good, Jen, you know, on the whole, no. look, looking back. Because you should always be looking forward, shouldn't you? You should be in the present moment and looking forward, I think. Mindful of the past. Ma definitely I'm, mindful. I'm certainly yeah. 
absolutely mindful of the past. Well, we are, of course we are, because we're constantly reminded of it, having quarterly checkups, you know. Yeah. So but let's forget all that. We can never fully shut the door. Let's gloss over all that. Yeah. Because, yes, four years ago, last week, we started a little show. We did. And unbelievably, yeah. four years later, this is now what we do. Mm. And that's all thanks to you. And I feel like I should now sing a song because that Do rhymed. You? It did rhyme. <laughs> There's no business like <laughs> Eyes and teeth, everybody. <laughs> the one thing I think which is the most important to me today is to get across to all of you how grateful I am for you empowering us to do what we've done for mm. the last 100 episodes. Absolutely. Because, you know, in, in the darkest of nights, th this all appeared, and we, we honestly expected nobody to watch, but you did. And then, you know, f fast forward to episode 24, we thought we were gonna have to stop, but w we were then encouraged to b be the very first Knitting podcast to ever. I think we probably we, were. no 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 we to be the very first right. knitting podcast that ever started a Patreon campaign, and that, that and it was incredibly scary doing that. Yes, but, incredibly scary, and we nearly didn't do it because of me. You well, know, and it also, was really because of me. I said I can't. I just can't. It's it's too much of a risk. You yeah. know, I, I I just decided one day, I just came into your office, didn't I? And I just said, you know what? Let's just give it a go because... Well, it all happened very quickly, Kay, because we put out it episode... It was very quick. We all we, we put out episode 24, which was effectively us saying goodbye. Yeah. And within two weeks... It was a, it was a very quick... We put quick, out episode 24, was, part two. But within that, that two-week period, it, it was like one day, I was like, absolutely not. You know, that's it. That's that's the end of it. And then the next day, I was thinking, no, it can't be the end of it. I really, you know, I really wanted to have, give this a go. It was very much like that for the whole of that yes. time. Yes. Whilst we don't enjoy looking backwards, and what you saw at the start is the uh, well, no, no, no. There's a couple more tiny little bits of things which we'll we'll touch on in in a moment or two. We couldn't get to episode 100 without doing a couple of things. To ce well, actually, we're doing three things to celebrate. Yeah. One's in the past, and two are in the present, oh, which okay. I like. <laughs> because today, in the show notes, you have access to a very special edition of episode one. Yes. Now, when we filmed episode one, like we've already said, we thought it was the one and only show. But we also, as you'll see, well, no, actually, you won't see anymore because we've what we've done is I found the raw footage to episode one, so we re-edited it as if we were putting it out today. So all the things that we've learned over the last four years about producing a show, putting yeah. a show together, yeah. we've applied it to episode one. Yeah. And you can go watch it after you've watched this, of course. <laughs> I'm not watching it. <laughs> Why? What's I that, just don't like watching myself. I don't like watching myself generally. You know, I do watch the the episodes back. I bet you five well, pounds you do watch I'm it. I more listen actually than watch. I just don't enjoy looking at myself. Well, no, but that's because you have anxiety issues with regards yeah, to know. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, w w we should save it for our anxiety podcast, <laughs> oh. w w where, where we <laughs> where we delve into the reasons why you have anxiety about your image. Okay. Because I think that you know seriously that. That is an interesting point, isn't it? Do you know? I'm not quite sure. I've got no idea. I've got no idea. But it, no, I do have an idea. I do. Do I lots. Do know. I wonder if lots and lots of ladies have. Oh yeah. I bet you all the money in the world. I think that everyone. the vast majority of ladies have issues with their image. Yeah. And that stems from the image that is portrayed by the media yes. of women. I would say that's. I'm sure you probably say that's all largely correct. You probably um, all knew that already, but we've just nailed it down <laughs> right now. It's never really dawned on me before. Yeah, even if it's not the media, it's it's society in general, isn't it? Can I give you all t some advice? Forget them all, because I can tell yeah. you this, right? If you feel happy and confident and walk out with a spring in your step, mm. it doesn't matter what you look like, you will look beautiful. Mm. No, absolutely. It's true, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I, I agree. I think for me it's difficult 
for that to ever happen. I think, I think, I do mm. think that beauty, oh, I sound like such a fool. Beauty totally comes from within. It does absolutely come from within. And, yeah. you know, if you're sat there and you're, because trust me, there's been times when I felt truly awful, you know, all, all because of the ops and things, you know, like the day when that came off and mm. I just burst into tears when I looked yeah, at it. And, that, that you know, th- th- this, you know, yeah. so many things where you look at it and sometimes I do feel disgusting, but then, you know, you take a step back from that and you realise that beauty does come from the energy that you exude. I, I don't I want even to punch s- myself in the face right now. I don't even see your scars. Well, you're so but kind. I don't, and I say this to you really often. You know, I, when I when I look, you know, when you've got your top off or whatever, and when I look at your neck, I don't even see them because that's not what matters. You know, it's not. You're not any different of a person. But but because doesn't you've this got some scars. isn't what Kay's saying so pertinent for all of us? You know, for everybody who looks in the mirror and mm. thinks I look awful, mm. and then that sets your mood for the day, for the month, yeah. for the year, for your life. Yeah, don't but, do it. But then conversely, you know, if you if you're a lady and and if, for example, putting on some makeup in the morning makes you feel better, do it, regardless of what other people might think of your makeup or whatever. You know. Then, then absolutely do it. You know, if that is what you need to do to feel that bit more confident and that bit more like yourself, then you go ahead and put that makeup on yeah. or wear yeah. that bright lipstick yeah. or put that um, nail polish on that, you know, you wouldn't normally wear. Yeah. If it just brings you that bit more joy... It's true, it's true. Then go ahead and do it. You know, I, I, what, I love, what I love about what we do... Today, 100th episode huge new adventure coming. Oh, and, it's a good one. And we've got lots of what's off your needles uh, coming your way. We've got some great what's on your needles. Yeah. You know, it, we started off today, I had a few ideas about what we were going to talk about to start with, and suddenly we've delved into something mm. that is so important and so pertinent. Mm. And also, I think we've got an answer to an awful lot of... I think I think the pressure on women to look good is much higher than... A man. Yes, yeah, I mean, because of the media. I'm sure some of you will disagree with no, me, no, but I think it's true. generally that is, you know, a, a, a bloke man doesn't have to put makeup on. No, a bloke, you know, can have a terrible haircut. We've spoken about this recently, yeah. and within two weeks, I've grown it out. You know, a bloke does not have the same pressures no. as what a lady's got. Yeah. But, as what? But, yeah, yeah. All that matters is you. It's true, isn't it? Yeah, it's and true. If you aspire to be a vibrant beautiful lady (laughs) all you've got to do is just own it you know get up in the morning put on the clothes which you want to put on yeah don't put makeup on do put makeup on who cares and then walk out of your house and walk with a stride and a strut and enjoy life yeah because then you will look like what you want to look like yeah which is beautiful yeah yes so The first of our little 100th episode treats is there in the show notes for you to go and click on and go and enjoy. And I thoroughly enjoyed going through that show. It was a very weird process and very pleased to film a behind the scenes, which Kay joined me for a little bit. One thing I did notice. Oh, what have I done? No, just seen the little snippets. What have I done? No, is that I think we seem exactly the same. Do you know, in the way that we yeah, talk I mean, what, and the what, way that we... Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's interesting is... I think sometimes you expect over that amount of time... For, for things uh, to have changed. For things to have changed. Yes. But I think actually the way that we are with each other and the way that we talk, I think it's exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Which I, is reassuring and comforting, I think. Yes, it really is. Through everything, we, we've we still maintained, yes. yeah. you know, the... the the kind of fun and enjoyment of each other. Well, that what, sounds wrong, but you know what I mean. What it reflects, I think, is, and it's something that I've clung on to very tightly, when you go through the type of things that we've been through, it shows up relationships. Yeah, definitely. To be either it can on make firm or, ground. It can make or break. Yeah, I've seen it Absolutely, firsthand yeah. on people I've, I've sat in wards yeah. with who've, who've, you know, come in with... And I can understand but, it. I can I, understand as, it too. You know, I can as, understand as, it too. as difficult a thing to think about as it is, I do. I can understand it having been through it. Yeah. You know, that it just gets too much. Yeah, I can, I can, I totally get 
you know, so that there's no there's no criticism coming no, from, 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 not. from us at all. But no. what these things tend to do, and I think it's the same in an awful lot of relationships, you know, business relationships, similarly, you know, businesses that go through hard times mm. will either break or come out stronger. Mm. Similarly, m- marriages. It never seems like, we were, we were sort of talking about this this morning, or I was sort of waffling on about this morning, it never seems like a strong enough word. Because <laughs> it's, so, it's so much more than that. Mm. But, you know, that's for our... Our marriage counselling podcast. We've we've made up several more podcasts, haven't we? All these new shows (laughs) that aren't starting, let me tell you. But what it did was, I think it just strengthened rather than, I hope. Oh, yeah, it definitely. (laughs) I mean, momentary. We had our moments, obviously, but. Did we? When? Just it being really, really difficult. Yes. You know, not, I don't mean moments of, oh my God, I'm going to walk out the door. I don't no. mean that. Well, that's what that sounded like. Just, no, no, I just mean moments of it being really, really hard yeah. and and thinking, oh my, you know, how on earth are we going to come out the other side of this? But you do, you know, you do, you get through it because that's all you can do. What you're seeing firsthand, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why there is a, a, a part of us both which will be very happy next episode. Because <laughs> it's number one. Because isn't it? it is number one. I'm not joking you when I say I'm so looking forward to, to, to turning, turning the that page, page yeah. and starting that yeah. next chapter because it's, I'm so excited. For the first time in forever, there'll be magic, there'll be that fun. Wasn't. There's lots of songs <laughs> to mind this morning. But life is a musical. Absolutely. That is, isn't that from a Barbie movie? For the first time in forever. A Barbie movie? Yeah, yeah. Did you actually just say that? Yeah, I did. I did. Look, I knit, I wear peach. <laughs> People are rolling about now thinking of you watching Barbie movies. Right. Right. For the first time in forever, <laughs> we are excited and, and empowered by the future. And you, we're going to talk a little bit about that as, as we, we go through the show. Because, you know, the next hundred episodes are going to be so much better than the last hundred. <laughs> The amount of ideas, the amount of creativity, we finally reached a point, and this actually, this brings me to a really pertinent point, and we never talk about this, and we're not going to talk about it for long today, but we would not be sat here looking at you doing this, were it not, for our patrons. Our patrons from episode 25 onwards empower us to do what we do, empower us, empower me to go and learn how to properly edit. (laughs) And what I've seen, looking back, is I'm embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. Oh, but I you kept know, saying to him, "Don't be silly." We, we, we can we can just forget all that. But you know, looking back, I was like, "Oh no, this is terrible." But our patrons empower us to do everything that you see. You know, the new adventures, our magazine knitability, the pudding club. You know, knit or forfeit. Yeah. You know, absolutely everything is empowered by our Patreon yeah. campaign. And we, we've got such a fantastic community, yes. you know, of, of our patrons, and everyone is just so supportive and of each other as well as of yeah. us, I mean. And, you know, the, the number of friends that we've made and the yeah. number of friends that other, of, you know, patrons have made friends yeah. with patrons. And yeah. it's just such a fantastic place to be. It's, yeah. it's such a positive what we set yeah, out to do group of people what we set out to do begin to create a channel which has no advertising at all no uh, n- no gifted products for for review no we don't do that we wanted to be able to control absolutely everything that we put on the channel and and we've done that mm. and now we you know we're in this position where we've now reached a point where we can start looking to the future and we can start thinking about what comes next. And, you know, as the the campaign continues to grow, the types of things that we can start to do, Mm -hmm. you know, we had a conversation just the other day, you know, okay, four years time, you know, four years have passed, this is what we've done in the next four years. The end game is a whole channel of programming. Think of it as Netflix. Netflix. It's a whole pro, it, a whole channel of pro- programming with no advertising at all. Everything that you see, you can trust. And you know, in the not too distant future, we really would love to start making new new shows mm. with new presenters yeah. as well. Yeah. The reissue of episode one is just but one 
of the 300th episode exciting things because it would not be a party and after all let's party <laughs> dan was laughing really? his head off when he saw that he said that's so just, funny i said why it just it's really a party, me, isn't it? It really made me laugh. <laughs> no, the party's on Sunday. That's yes. when the after show party after is. After show party on Sunday. 2 p.m. BST, patron only podcast yeah. live. Bring a cake, everybody. Bring a cake. Time to celebrate with an after show party, and we know how racy those can get. <laughs> but not only that, there'll be lots of knitted guests. Yeah. But not only that, we have a royal wedding to celebrate. <gasps> oh, I'm so exciting. So exciting. I'm <laughs> you so. <are. laughs> I'll do that again. No, I'm no, I'm not. I refuse to edit that bit out. Oh, he edits all the stuff, you know. Certainly not. As well. I'm not editing that out. Fluff a word. Yes, I'm very excited about the royal wedding. Oh, can't wait to see the dress. And I know. We've all had bets on what colour the Queen's going to be wearing. Yes. You're not going to be right. I am. You're not. I am. You're not. I am. Because she wore green to the garden party but yesterday. That wasn't green. It was green. It didn't look green to it me. It was mint green. No, it wasn't. No. No, it wasn't. I've said pink. Brian has said orange. Oh, I see. Could be orange. Could be. I've said if Could it's be. peach, then she wins. Yeah. You've said green. Oh, yeah, Brian is right. Patron only podcast live on Sunday after show party when we shall let's party. But we have a gift <gasps> for all of you. I wanted to do something for the, when I, you know, when we were sort of talking a while ago about the hundredth episode. I said, oh, do you know, I'd really just like to do something for everyone, just as, just a little something, just as, as our way, my way of saying thank you to everybody. And I just, I thought about that for a while, and then something just sort of jumped into my mind. And I was thinking about the fact that Bryony just loves to read. She reads and reads and reads, you know, which we love that she's yeah. so mad about reading. We think it's one of the most joyous things that you can do in life. So her love of reading and my love of knitting socks. And I kind of was sort of putting those two things together. And I came up with a little, a little something. Show it, woman. It's really cute. So here we go. Look. It's a little bookmark. It's a sock bookmark. And I'm calling it, I'll show you the front page of the pattern because it's a free pattern, a bookmark for Dobby. It's available now. It's available now. It's Go uploaded it. onto Ravelry. It's a free pattern. So it's a bookmark for Dobby. It's a little sock bookmark. So I'll put it into, I've brought a little prop already. So look. Oh, <laughs> it's really cute. So what I did was I, I knit a plain stocking stitch version and this yarn is actually my Dobby colourway. It seems high, highly appropriate. This is lovely. There's a plain stocking stitch version, but then I've also included a little sort of lace version and a textured version. So this is the lace one. It's just got little eyelets, but it's, it's really cute. And this is some yarn I dyed as well. So you've got eyelets on this one. And then this one has got a lovely sort of textured rib, which I think is super cute. It looks kind of like a grandpa sort of type of sock, doesn't it? A little textured rib. And you can use, I've put in there, you know, you can use whatever cuff you want. And I've given you three options. And then there's obviously three options of, you know, the pattern to put on there. There's a cute little miniature umbrella toe, which I think is super cute. That's, this is another one that I did in BB's Blanket, which I think came out really lovely. So it's a proper little sock with a heel flap and a heel turn and you know, you pick up the gusset stitches and decreases. Did you do the two stitch? I did. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I did. I totally did. Yeah, I did my two stitch pick up on the gussets. Do you know what happened um, the other day, folks? I caught Kay with the sock analyzing the hole again. I had to just sit it down and say, stop it I now. I was like, oh, do you think I can get stop it? Stop it now. Do you think I can get it better? And You've it's done like, it. there's nothing. I said, look at my socks. There's I nothing finished a pair wrong of socks, which I'll show you later. Know, and look, the I holes know. are closed. Move on. I constantly think I can do something you better. You have to close the door on it it's, now. It's right, you know, it's perfectly good. And it's actually, of all the things that I've designed and come up with, it's one of the things that I'm the most proud of is being able to close that hole if I hold that one up and you can see the corner there it's just really neat and there's no pulling stitches when I discovered that honestly it was like it's like my life is complete you know <laughs> and I can close that little tiny gap without it being untidy so that's in my drippity drop pattern how to do that 
So yeah, so look, little socks. And then of course, what I thought you could do, I've got four here. I do, I do have another one. I tried a different texture pattern, but didn't like it. So there is another one upstairs as well. What I thought you could do is you could actually knit 24 of yes, these, yes, couldn't yes. you? You could knit 24 through the year, through the rest of this year, and then have yourself a little sock advent calendar, couldn't you? Because there's plenty of room in the little sock to pop a treat in there. You could actually sew felt numbers on if you wanted to sort of number them that way. Could you do colour work you could on the front? Just, well, you could do a bit of colour work. Or you, you could... Um, duplicate stitch. Duplicate stitch them on. Or you could just clip them with a peg, couldn't you, yeah. to something and put Good the idea. number on the peg. Good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a myriad of, of yeah. different things you could do with these. But I just thought it was really cute and... Like I said, the pattern is now up on Ravelry. It's free. Go make yourself some cute little socks. And it has been test knit as well. I've got lovely Sarah Hepworth. Um, I asked her if she would test knit the sock for me. So she's been through it and test knit it. So all should be well with the pattern. So, ladies and gentlemen, those are... That's our triumvirate of... Uh... That sounds like a pattern that a sock matician would do. <laughs> Isn't it? Get on with it, Nathan. Nathan, you need to get, get it on made. that one. That's our three-way celebration of episode 100. Go watch episode one, the new edition, below in the show notes. Whilst you're knitting yourself a new bookmark. Go download Don't the new take bookmark. Very long. Knit one in an afternoon easily. And podcast patrons, come and join us on Sunday for a very special after-show party. Oh, yes. Folks... We've thought very much, just before we move on, and we'll get on with actually showing you some knitting, because after all, this is a knitting Absolutely. podcast. Absolutely. Before we move on, I think it's fair to say that all that we have aspired to do over the last 100 episodes is inspire, entertain. Yeah. And, and you know, when appropriate, certainly with our tutorials, is educate as well. Yeah. And, you know, it's been just the most fun. And... We are, honestly, we're just getting started. As soon as we physically can, and as more patrons come on board, it just speeds up the process and enables us to do these things quicker. But we've got the History of Knitting show, which I'm still researching. I just need time to research mm. that more. It's such, it's such a, a huge it topic. Is, it yeah. is. The Hidden Histories of Great Britain I show. Know, definitely. Yes. Yeah. Which, you know, again, just needs time. What we really need, and, you know, we're not far away from being able to do this, is we need a, a, just a small crew with us, mm. a cameraman and a sound man. Mm. And, you know, that would then enable us, you know, to get out and get that done. Loads more cooking, you know, extended copies of knitability, more plan and patterns. Yeah. So much to yeah. come. We cannot wait. What was the first thing that you ever showed on the Bakery Bears podcast? This was a question in Niddle Forfeit. I have no idea. Shall we take a look? Okay. Kay Jones, what's on your needles? <laughs> well, the first thing on my needles is what, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm knitting on. And this is a sock. Is it for me? No. Oh, okay. I'm just I've, I've only knit you about 25 pairs of socks. Doesn't matter. And I've just literally... And how many have you knit for yourself? There is a mountain of socks in the bedroom <laughs> and they're all yours. I think there's, no, the, there's not a mountain. Okay. Just, a small just hillock. Just a small <laughs> hillock of socks. Um, I am quite addicted to socks, it's got to be said, but saying that, right, this is the Hermione's Everyday Sock. Oh, that's quite a good picture of it. I was going to say that. <laughs> I absolutely was, that's what I was going to say. Can you believe it? And I've still got those socks. Oh, yes. Fabulous. Wear them all. Well, I say I wear them all the time, but I actually don't because they're some of my favourite socks. Right. So I ration the wearing of them. Right. But four years on, I've still got them and yeah. they're absolutely perfect. But what we have there yes. is the combination of great yarn yeah. and a truly legendary pattern. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. do you know what? You can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong with that pattern. And four years ago, mm. if you go back and watch episode one, you'll find out I didn't have a clue about Harry Potter. Because I, I don't think any of us did, because Bryony wasn't mad about Harry Potter back then. Within episode one, I couldn't remember Hagrid's name. No. Oh, I was going, no. that big fella. You know, the, 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 the big fella? <laughs> oh, that's quite cool. <laughs> but we also, we didn't know Erica. And now Gosh, we do. No, I remember getting that first the first message from America. And you nearly combusted. <gasps> I did. I woke you up. Yeah, yeah. At like I five did. in the morning. Erica, I look did. at this. I did. I said, Erica Luna messaged me. Leave it. I've had a message from America. Luna. The Hermione lady. Here's a question. 
Yeah. What was I? What was on my needles in episode one? Um, a bank head. Should we take a look? What's on your needles, Dad? Well, how many times have I knit this hat? Oh gosh, I don't know. Two or three times, Two maybe. Two or three times. What's the wall? It's um, Rowan. Turn a square. Oh my goodness. It was a hat. <laughs> It was a hat, she was close. Hadn't discovered the bank head in episode one. Oh, that came much afterward. Right. And how amazing, isn't it, that I was using the Aram that I would then go on to yeah, knit yeah. your that's new right. Irish coffee. That's right. Because that was left over from, from the, the original I Irish coffee. Yeah, that's true. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's enough reminiscing. Yes, can Folks, we get on? Can we now just get on with the show? Yes. Would that be okay? Stop waffling the saying. W will you allow us? Good. Kay Jones? Yes. What's on your needles? Well, it's a pair of socks oh. because... What do you mean, oh? I was joking. Isn't he nice? I'm sorry. I'm working on my serious socks. Oops. Here's the first one. Oopsies. Oh, it's so pretty. And I did, I decided to use the purple for the toe as well, and I'm glad I did actually. I really like the look of it. I was worried I wouldn't have enough of it, because I don't think it was a full 20 grams that I had. I think I'd already used a bit of it. But I've weighed what I've got left, and I'm sure that I've got enough to do, you know, another heel and toe. So here's the first one. I used my Prairie Socks pattern and the umbrella toe, which is, to be honest, the only toe that I'm knitting these days now because I know that it fits your toe really well as well. Oh, it fits your toe really well. It's my toe and it's good for Bryony. So. And I just think, you know, you don't, you just avoid having any of those ladders down the side of when you do a wedge toe. And that, you know, where it can be a weak area and I've had socks that have go, you know, that have gone through at that point. So I just think this is a stronger option. And you don't need to kitchen it as many stitches at the end either. Because there's only a few stitches, but if you look right, you probably can't see. If you look right on the very end. You're right. Whereas you can get a little lump, can't you, if you just pull the yarn through the last few stitches. And I also, find, a kitchen will be stronger, um, isn't it's, it? I think it'll be stronger too, yeah. Just to kitchen of those last few stitches, so that's what, what I recommend that you do. So this is it's lovely, it's on my, I think it's a Hardwick, I can't tell if it's gold or silver Stellina, it's one or the other, it might be gold. I really struggle to tell the difference, you know, sometimes when I'm dyeing them, I'm like, is this gold or silver? I don't know if it's my eyes or what it is, but it is one of the, it's gold or silver, not sure which. And then this colourway, the purple, I, I dyed as well, and I can't even remember what it was, but I know that I've dyed up a very similar colour, which, which is called Hogwarts at Dusk. So I know that I can get a very similar colour to this. So I might do some sets, actually, of Sirius and Hogwarts at Dusk, because it reminds me of that scene in the third film, is it? As Azkaban, where he stood... And it's dark and he's looking back at Hogwarts and it just kind of reminds me of that scene. So that's the first one done and I'm well on with the second one. Look at me go. I'm to the heel flap now. I'm ready to do the heel flap. I will carry on with that now and I, this has just been my bedtime knitting actually. So this has taken me a little while to get this bit done. But I haven't really been in a rush, you know, so I've just been doing a few rows every night. Now I will probably zoom through the rest of this. I tend to sort of, the second sock, once I get to this point, I tend to just knit very quickly because I just want to get the pair finished. And I'm using my trial goose again. Mini twists, 2.25 on 64 stitches. And I've got loads of yarn left. So I'll definitely have some leftovers, which will be cool for squares and blankets and making a few minis maybe. Dan Jones, yes. what's on your needle? I shall show you. And what better project to have on my needles in episode 100, when you consider what Kay's first thing that she ever showed was. Oh. It's a pair of Hermione's everyday socks. You said you weren't, you didn't need the blocker. I fibbed. He fibbed. I fibbed. I I'm told a little fib. I'm going to put it on a blocker. And the most exciting part of this sock is this. Look, I remembered to do the heel <laughs> he turn. He did. And He's do you very know why? Proud of himself. Do you know why I remembered? Because I was following a pattern. Oh yes. And the most hilarious thing is, was we were sat there last night, and I got to the bit in the pattern where it said, "Now do the heel turn," and I gave a little chuckle, didn't he I? He did. And you I said, like, "What's funny?" You said, "What's funny?" And I said, "Heel turn time." <laughs> I'd forgotten again. I had I hadn't forgotten. 
I, I knit it and I was thinking, oh no, because you know the only thing that is a skill which is going to take me a bit of time oh, to nail yeah. is picking up these stitches. From the garden but I did edge. okay on you that did one. Do I did okay. okay. Yeah, it's not bad. It could be better. What? It could. You don't mean to do it. No. Crumbs. I can't tell you how many times I'll say to him. Oh, she does it to wind me up, and it I works. I do not. I do it because I want to help you, and no, I'll just no, say, no, "Look, no. Do you, if it's something that's not that, helping me." But if it's something that you're maybe never going to do again, if you don't particularly enjoy it, it's not helping me. How would I ever know if it is something I enjoy? I've done it well, done one it and a half times mm. because you did half of one. That oh, heel, did I? That'll be that neat half there. No, no, that was th that's my half. No, it's not. I don't think that's mine. I, I was just thinking, gosh, right. that bit looks so much better than that bit. All right, that okay. Like, well, yeah. whoop de doo da. <laughs> Good for you. Well, look, look I haven't finished showing one. this. Okay, okay, you show I'll that. I'll just one. hold it up. You hold that one up. Oh, has... I might have to knit another pair. Yes, well, you should. Mm. It, it, the, the pattern is absolutely stupendous, and it, it does raise an interesting question. When you consider that the Hermione's everyday sock is a free pattern mm. and how it's just perfect, you know, the, the, there's no question about what you should be doing next. Something's come up in the community and, uh, and just a little bit over the last few weeks and that, is, and that partially <laughs> involves me, but that also involves two or three other people as well who've been having similar problems. If you pay for a pattern, what is a realistic expectation on after sales is the wrong word, um, but yeah. follow up. Fo yeah. If you've paid good money, and I paid good money for one particular pattern, and I had a question about that pattern where a part of it just is not clear. In fact, more than a part of it, there's a lot of bits of it aren't clear at mm. all. You know, and when you consider, it, I'm certainly no expert, but, but Kay knows her stuff, and we both sat and looked at it, and it still isn't completely clear. And, you know, if you paid a little bit for a pattern, I don't think you should be guessing, should you? No, I don't think you should be guessing. So what is a realistic expectation on that designer? If you ask them, if you email them and ask them the question, how... Well, well for, first of all, you've bought that pattern and you don't understand it. Now, there is, of course, the question of perhaps you've bought a pattern which is beyond your ability. Yes, yes, So, true. you know, I totally get that. But... Let's just imagine a scenario where it's got nothing to do with your abilities and it's got everything to do with how clear that pattern is. Mm. And it can be the, what we mean in that in the, is that say it tells you to do something where you can interpret that in different ways, or well, let's imagine just, it doesn't tell you to do something just, at all. It's just missing a bit of yeah. information. Let's imagine uh, that it's assuming yeah, that you're going to do something. That's what I meant to say. That is, there's maybe assumptions going on that you already know how to do that. I've seen two or three occasions from different people in the community where this same problem has arisen. And it comes down to the way that people write patterns. And I totally get that everyone's different. So I believe that it's a fair expectation that you should be able to contact mm. the person that you've paid for that pattern and get some clarity. And it's very disappointing mm. when you contact that person and they don't respond. Mm. I, I don't think it's acceptable. I don't personally. think it's acceptable, no. Not when and, you've paid a you know, decent you've amount paid, of money. You've paid, you know, what is the higher of the going rates, yeah. let's say. Yeah. Um, but when, you the, know... I, now I, I saw someone just, just in the last two days who has paid money for a pattern, started knitting it, he couldn't understand it, contacted the designer, got no response... So I've ripped it out yeah. and started knitting something, something else. Something else. Yes. But then you see, that's money that that person's wasted. Plus it's time that they've wasted, which yeah. is precious, isn't it? It is. Um, and that's actually happened to me as well. I started knitting something and just was completely flummoxed by the explanation. And I did message them. And again, I didn't get a response. So I did exactly the same thing. I just ripped it out and moved on. On a pattern, for example, my email address is always on the bottom of the pattern. So was this pattern... I and that's what that I was going to say, address. you know, you did use the email address that was on the pattern. And I said to you, well, you know, you've got to give it a certain amount of time. They might be, I have. Yeah, which we have. It's been a number of weeks. And um, I have followed it up yeah, with, with a message via which a I different know. different method. And I know that it's been seen. Yeah. And still, they, still they haven't nothing. seen fit to and respond. If, even if, for example, you're away, because sometimes you can't always answer your emails, can you, straight away. If you going to be away from your desk then you should have an out of office type answer shouldn't you so yeah. that, that person knows that it's been received 
it's going to be dealt with. Yeah. There was nothing, was no. there? I think you might... Did you get, like, a stock no. reply? No. Oh, right, you didn't get anything. No. No, right. Okay. So, in summary, I mean, first of all, I'd love to know what you guys think is a fair expectation after you... I think the, the key point here is if you've paid money mm. for a pattern, because there's a difference. I totally get a budding young designer putting out a free pattern to get a foot in the door. Mm. Mm. But isn't it funny, though, how... Erica, Hermione's every day, mm. before we knew Erica, if you'd messaged her, she would respond. Of course she And she'd, she'd yeah. respond fast. Of course she would. I think sometimes as well, I mean, obviously I, I can see it from the other side as well, because I, I, do, I don't get a lot of questions actually on my patterns, but when I do, I, I always respond. There's only been one occasion where I missed a message, and that was one that I received via Ravelry. And I'd read it, and then it happened to fall on the day that we went back to the hospital yeah. and we thought there was a problem. So that wasn't that person's fault at all. It wasn't, but, but all remember we'll say though, is that, that you, if, you do put your email address and that's the that's way That's what that I was going to say. If, yeah. if that had been an email, I don't think I would have missed it. Well, the problem with Ravelry is once you've read it, it just, and if you get a lot of Ravelry messages, which I tend to, it just kind of disappears into the ether, doesn't it? I agree with you. I just don't think it's acceptable. But no. And I know sometimes if designers are very busy, I've heard a designer say um, fairly recently that because she's got a lot of designs out there, then she gets a lot of questions and she just couldn't cope with the number of questions that she was getting. So she actually took someone on yeah. to help her answer those questions. And yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. You know, you've solved the problem that was yeah. there. Yeah. But that might be the problem for this person, but they just haven't solved it. No. So that's where there needs to be... First of all, I would remove the email address from your patterns. Because if you've put your email address on then the pattern... That's saying to people... You know, a you customer who has bought me. your pattern is yeah. going to assume, quite rightly, that that's the way to contact you and for you to get a response. Mm. So I would take that off and I would make it clear, personally, I would make mm. it clear on the pattern, on the pattern. and also on my in, in my Ravelry yeah. store yeah. that what is a realistic expectation on mm. when I can mm. answer any queries. Pattern support, I think, yeah. is known as... Yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah, because what it does is it creates frustration. Mm. And, you know, it's not fair, is it, when you've paid money and you end no. up with something sat on the shelf and yeah. we've all been in that position. I think we probably have at yeah. one point or another. Maybe it's part of life and maybe it's frustration that we're never going to get over, but it's something that I never hear anyone talk about. No, you they don't. Hear and anyone ever say. It's a difficult subject, isn't it, to talk about, but I think we do need to talk about these difficult things sometimes because we're never going to get a solution for it and it could be that these people have, have no idea that, that this is a problem, but then they're obviously knowing that they're not replying to messages i i couldn't live with myself if i thought i hadn't replied no. to a question about a pattern you know yeah. three weeks four weeks later yeah it's rude apart from anything else i do fear that there is a proportion of people out there who think my job is done i expect so yeah and, and, I expect you know so. with the greatest of respect your job has only just begun yeah because... especially if it's a very complex pattern you know yeah sweaters and complicated shawls and different techniques and things like that yeah because everybody sort of interprets things in a different way and there's lots of levels of experience you know somebody might really want to have a go at that pattern i really want to knit it but i'm just not quite sure what that means yeah. the standpoint that we always come from is wanting to reflect knitting in the best possible light mm. and you know i would hate to think that anyone ever picked up needles, got some yarn, bought a pattern, was cold-shouldered by the, the, the designer mm. and stopped knitting because they couldn't work mm. out what was going on. Mm. And, you know, I think it's so important for all of us. And, you know, maybe I'm spoiled because I, I see the way that you deal with people. It's so important, isn't it, for us all to support and cherish everyone that's within mm. our community. Because as soon as we stop doing that, as soon as we start disrespecting people within our community, that's when the community will start to... To, to, to fritter away a little bit and um, we certainly don't want that to happen no what else is on your needles so that's your lovely sock anyway yes. and it's Nicole C. Mendes yarn beautiful beautiful yarn what else have I got on yeah, why don't you get off my projects and start picking up your own look we were deep in conversation I know you're jealous of my knitting oh I am yeah eh what <laughs> 
<laughs> that makes it sound like I couldn't do it. Right, my next thing that I'm knitting is the arrow cowl. It's lovely. And I like it a lot. Yeah, I really like this. It's the arrow cowl by Lisa Haynes. But it's this lovely pattern that I showed you last time. What are you doing? I'm trying to put what that What are you bit doing with that? Attacking him. Trying to hook me with my sock blocker. Get off. And I'm quite a way in now, which is lovely and I'm, I'm halfway through the mosaic section here we go it's me scrunched up in my bag but look isn't it pretty so you can see up here look i've started the mosaic knitting it's not difficult at all i didn't actually have any idea how you did this i'd seen it loads of times and i've seen it in stitch dictionaries and things like that but i really didn't have any idea how you did it and it's really simple it's just basically a series of slip stitches and then we've got knits and pearls so it's it's not difficult at all and it produces this lovely in this case it's like a step going that way and then the next session goes the other way so it makes an arrow really pretty didn't seem to take me very long to do either it's really nice and i'm loving how these two colors are working yes i am in a severe peach stage at the moment so i apologize if there's a peach vibe going on but yeah i really like how the purple is working with that sort of neutrally peachy sort of shade it's really pretty the only one thing that i wasn't particularly happy with and this is totally me is where you swap yarns so you change yarns every two rounds so you just carry them up and i've done that before and i started doing it where you you get like a jogless jog thing going on but i just didn't like it it just was looking messy so i'm not now doing that i'm you just you can barely see it i know well oh my goodness it's at the back of your neck no one's ever going to see it also i'm looking but straight at it and can't see it but here's where i don't know if you can see now but, but there is a jog here going on this is where i'm changing yarns up here yeah, it's just not the neatest and you've you've just got to be careful that when you carry your yarns that it's not tight so that it doesn't affect the kind of stretchy bit of that and I think it's okay actually, I don't think it's too tight and I'll always make sure that that's the back of my neck because you can actually, you know, you can see where it is so it really isn't a bother, I've kind of made it into an issue because I just like everything to look as, as good as it can but the pattern's very clear, not had any problems with it at all so now I've just got to finish the mosaic bit and then basically I'll be repeating what I've done here but doing it in opposite. So the lace section at the top will be in the purple. I really, I've really enjoyed knitting it and I like the fact that I'm knitting it on a sock, on a sock. I said that before, on a hat size needle. I actually changed to Knit Pro Novas. I was using Knit Pro Symphonies but I really like for knitting I've said this I think numerous times but when I'm doing like sock head hats I really love knit pro novas they're really cheap they're just they're just really nice they you know they're not super pointy but they're plenty pointy so and those I, are knit pro novas yeah Gosh. knit pro novas how much are they? oh they're no money at all they're like four pounds or something that's insane isn't it yeah whereas you know some of the needles are six seven eight pounds I mean, it's and really shocking because, you know, I've been knitting a long time now. W when I look at that, I, I, mm. I wouldn't think that that was a cheap needle. No, I mean, no, they're, they're just, they're lovely. And I've had several pairs of these now in different sizes because I've, I've got a few pairs that are three millimetres and not had any problems with those. These ones are 3.75 because you go up a size to do the mosaic knitting because it pulls in because of all those slip stitches. So these are 3.75 and the rest I've been knitting on 3.5. So I'm just going to switch back to the 3.5 when I've finished that section of mosaic. But they're just, they're just lovely. They're just, you know, I d they don't cause me a problem. And the, the thing with needles I like is that I'm not thinking about the needle when I'm knitting. It's that yeah. nice of a needle yeah. that it, it, you're not thinking, oh gosh, you know, that joins a bit of a devil or I don't like those points. You're just enjoying the process because That's such a, there's a no... Really 
pertinent and bang on point to make yeah. and you know it applies I think to any job that you're doing yeah, if the tool if tools, that you're using yeah absolutely just does the job yeah and you don't you have know, to if, think if about it if you're a woodworker and you've yeah. got a plane that's driving you yeah. mad then yeah. it makes your job so much more difficult doesn't it and those mm. as you've just said they're just lovely they just they're do just, the job yeah they just do the job and they're a great price the challenge for everyone I suppose in anything that we do is we're all different. We're all different. And, That's right. And you know, it's brilliant that we've got so good much for the choice goose these is not, days. Yeah, but you know what's good for the goose sometimes isn't necessarily good no, for the gander. Absolutely. And that's why, you know, I think it's so important that we do experiment. And yeah. you know, you do experiment I a do. lot. I, yeah, I try it. Every new needle that comes out, I pretty much try, you know. Because you just want if there's something else out there that's better for you, you, you want to know, don't you? Yeah. I love that so, texture. The lace is really pretty yeah. and it'll be even more pretty when it's blocked. Will it? Yeah, because it it'll be more open. Yeah, ah. it'll, you'll be able to see it. But I think it looks lovely now. Yeah. And the two yarns I'm using, there's Malabrigo Sock in Abril, right. which is the purple. That's number 853. So it's Abril, which is this lovely grapey purple. And then my, the peachy sort of colour is from Whimsy. And it's Prairie Dusk. It's the Sokusu O. And it's this beautiful. It's washing out a little bit there, but it's sort of like a greyish, greyish peachish sort of colour. Beautiful. And they're both knitting up really lovely. Well, I am continuing in my cabling quest. And I have successfully, oh. I feel like such a pro, I have successfully split front and back. You have. And I'm now, I've done the decreases, haven't I? Yes. Decreases, yeah. Yeah, that's how you say that. Oh, is it? It's decreases. <laughs> you may not have realised that. I've done the decreases and I'm now in the, the process. Armholes. Yes, yes. I'm now in the process of knitting up Straight to the top and then I'll have to do some wraps and turns. He will. No, well, you, I, I have a tutorial to follow. You have oh, done a tutorial on wraps and turns, so hopefully... Go ahead, go on with it then. I remember when we filmed that tutorial, I was looking at it thinking, what is she doing? <laughs> what is this? And then I was thinking... What is this sorcery? Why? <laughs> well, I was thinking, why would you ever do this? Because well. at the time, garments just were, were not mm. on my... Well, it's used in all kinds of yeah, shawls of as well. There's a lot of, quite often you get short rows used in shawls. But there oh. is the, the lovely Sticking Samantha. Sticking me with you. Sorry, sorry, with my needle. I love these needles so much. Knit Pro Symphonies. Knit Pro Symphonies. Really? For I knitting didn't... garments. Oh, right. Are just perfection. Okay, look. I absolutely love them. Very Amazing. rhythmic stitch pattern, this. It's just great. I'm not enjoying knitting flat so much. Oh yeah, he's having to knit flat now. But you know, it's cool, I'm doing it. Yeah. I'm doing it, sister. You're doing it, you're yeah. doing it. No hassles. And, and the other stitches are all on hold. What I've done is I've gone from, you know, lovely, lovely, round and round we go, to let's get on with it and get this finished with the knitting flat. It's a change in mindset. Yeah. Very, very sort of good in a way, because there was a time when if I'd got to a point of knitting mm. like this where I would have just gone, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Whereas actually, and I think gauge you're doing wise, really, I mean, you're doing really well. Yeah, I mean, I, that's the other thing. You've just got to watch your gauge, haven't you, when you switch from in the round to knitting flat because your gauge is different. But it seems but okay. But it looks okay. Cool. It looks okay. And then we've got, once you've done that, and obviously you've got to do the front bit. Yeah, that's all right. You've got to tackle the sleeves because that looks tricky. Why does it look tricky? Well, it, it's just... Once you've picked up the stitches and got knitting, it's not tricky. Well, yeah, but you've got short rows again to make the sleeve cap. It's not difficult, right. but it's all stuff you've never done before. Well, there's plenty of stuff I've never done before. Well, I know that, but I'm just saying... You tackle it with an open mind <laughs> and positivity. Okay, I'm sorry. And good things will happen. <laughs> oh, yes. So, Samantha, lovely. And yes, hopefully the next time you see this, I will have finished the front and I yeah. will be into the back. Yeah. But there is a little way to go on the front. There is a bit of a way to go. Yes. It's surprising so. actually, the distance from like under here up to the top of your shoulder, it's quite a big distance. And I think because it goes kind of round like that, yeah. you don't realise how many inches that is. I'm really looking forward to doing the sleeves though because of the patterning on the yeah, sleeves. Yeah, there's some patterning on and there. And I think it will look... It'll just look We'll beautiful. just have to work out 
how the, you know the best method for you for knitting sleeves. Right. Whether, well, it's, it, whether it's DPNs or Magic Loop, or I have you know you could use a twelve inch circular, but I don't think you'd enjoy that. It's small and yeah. I did do it that way when I was knitting sleeves, but it was all, that was all plain as well. I think doing cables and stuff on a twelve inch circular wouldn't be right as pleasant. Okay. Magic Loop will probably be the way to go. Right. And the yarn is, of course, the lovely Rowan Aaron, isn't it? No. It isn't. It's it not at Drops all. Alaska. It's Drops Alaska. What am I talking about? Why did I say Rowan Aaron? I've no idea. Because that's what I knit the Irish oh, coffee right. in. right, okay. Oh, What's useless. he on about, everyone? I thought I'd got good. It's Drops Alaska. I think we've spoken enough about Drops Alaska and our love of. I thought I'd got good at this, but I haven't. No, he's rubbish. I'm Episode never... 100 and he's still absolute rubbish. I'm never going to claim. No, what else? No clue is on your needles. That's well, off your needles, you cheater. No, this one's on. Okay, I'll let you on. You always say that that doesn't count as an off your needle. No, it doesn't, right. it doesn't. So stop trying to claim it is off your needles. I'm not. You we're, not were. we're not in off your needles. We are in on your needles. Just show it, woman. It's the sock for Dan that I'm knitting out of the opal yarn. The good opal yarn, I'll say that. Um, and I finished this first mammoth sock. And do you know what? It kind of felt like this knit itself. How lovely. I, I haven't got a blocker big enough, sadly, but you get the idea. It's one of Dan's huge socks, but isn't that yarn just so nice? And it was a joy. It was an absolute joy to knit. I, you know, I, I loved every stitch. And I did the umbrella toe again. And look at that. Just when I was kitchen, kitchen, I find that hard to say. Kitchenering. Kitchenering. Yeah. The last few stitches, look, it turned cream there. There's like two stitches of cream. Look at that. Oh, that's awful. It's awful, Rip isn't it? Rip it out. Rip it back, I yeah. know. I did think about that. So that's the first one all done. Dan's got a 12 and a half inch foot. Oh, yeah. I, get, I get asked this quite a lot, actually. So his foot is 12 and a half inches long. So I cast on 72 stitches for Dan's socks and I used 2.5 millimetre needles, 18 rows cuff, 50 rows leg, and then down to the toe all together from, you know, from the top here, it's 142 rows, and then I do the toe. So that's how I know, you know, that's the kind of formula that I've got and that produces the right size sock. But this yarn's just so nice, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just so fun to knit. My favourite bit to knit is this section here where it's all muddly and it's like red, white and blue. I really love that bit. It's just, just lovely to knit. And I cast on the second one straight away. I've only done a few rows, but I just wanted to get it cast on. They're not going to match and I prefer them not to match actually. I nearly did a white toe as well, a cream toe. And I didn't deliberately because I knew that if I had done that, they wouldn't have matched by about three rows. And I, do, I would prefer them not to match at all than to them nearly match, do you know what I mean? So this one starts kind of here. So it's a little bit off, which I prefer that rather than it just being like two rows off. So there we go, that's one. And I, I weighed my yarn because I thought, gosh, I don't know why I weighed it because I know that I never run out of yarn, but I used, of the opal in this, I used about 42 grams of the opal. So with the heel as well, I think this would have weighed, you know, maybe 40, 47 grams, this sock altogether. So I could just get the full pair of socks out of a ball, but I do like putting in a contrast heel. I think it looks pretty. So I'm just working away on that and it's the opal, this range, I don't even like saying the word anymore because to us it sounds a little bit naughty. Hundred facet. There you go, Dan, Dan said it. There you go. And it's this artist who did that painting and it's based on that. And it's number 2104 and you can still get this if you look around for it, it is still available. And it's lovely, love it. Now then folks, it's time for us to go out on our next new adventure. Oh, Would lovely. you believe? Would you believe that it's already episode three of season two? I can't believe it. Gosh. And this is it's a journey that I've wanted to go on since I was very young. We're going to go and explore one of the most picturesque little places that I recall going to with my mum. Mm. 
So without further ado, let's head off and discover the Jersey Lily. Beautiful, isn't it? But 250 years ago, you would never have found a more wretched hive of pirates and smuggling. Welcome to the northeast coast of England. And before the arrival of the railways, coastal villages like this were home to some of our most notorious characters. But as the years progressed, an unbelievable transformation took place. As a sleepy seaside village became a bustling Victorian holiday destination, This is the story of the world's very first seaside tale. These are the new adventures of the Bakery Bears. You join me in a place I've wanted to get to and walk along since I was a teenager. You see, when I was growing up, my mum brought me on a summer holiday to a little beach just down there. Her best friend lived nearby, and as they would sit on the beach and chat, you'd find me either here in the arcades or splashing around in the sea, but my eyes were constantly drawn upward to that stunning cliff top. Twenty-five years later, I finally got up here, and what a view! Looking south down to Whitby, Scarborough and beyond, East, across the North Sea to Denmark and Norway. This was the sea the Vikings crossed in 850 AD to begin their raids of England. Looking north, we're straight up to Scotland, and in 120 AD, you would have seen Roman triremes carrying the Roman Emperor Hadrian. Now, Emperor Hadrian was, of course, traveling north, straight up the coast of England, on his way to wrecky the perfect spot to build his now famous Hadrian's Wall. And it's opportune that we should mention the Romans because they were the very first people to build here at this position on the coast. Unfortunately, the remains have been covered back over to preserve what's left, but this was the site of a Roman signal station. We know it was here because it was dug in Victorian times and this is what they found. These are the footings to a small tower which would have had a huge fire on the top. If the soldiers here saw danger approaching by land or sea, they would light their fire. And that blazing fire on top of that tower would act like a lighthouse and it would signal other towers littered all the way down the coast of England. And the reason they did that was so that they could get messages to their generals in their bases, often hundreds of miles away. These were the seeds that would grow into Morse code, telegrams, telephones, and now, of course, the internet. As the years passed, a fishing community began to grow up around this little stream. The Anglo-Saxons called it Sealta Berna, which means salty stream. And whilst the Viking invaders changed its name to Skelton Beck, the name of this little settlement remained. For 1,500 years, this was Saltburn. These, of course, aren't the original houses, although that pub right there is the original ship inn built before 1780. But the point is, Saltburn didn't grow. As the houses wore out, they were replaced, and this is what's left. 
Saltburn was, and really still is, a fishing village. When I say that, we immediately conjure up something beautiful and homely in our minds, don't we? Of little fishing boats with salty old fishermen. But reality couldn't be farther from the truth. Before the advent of the railways and then of course cars, villages like Old Saltburn found themselves often a long way from the arm of the law. So smuggling and of course piracy became commonplace and even accepted. And by the 18th and 19th centuries, this was the hub of smuggling for the whole of the north of England. Saltburn's problem was, it was just perfect for smuggling. Its isolated beach, combined with the fact it was set below high cliffs, made it perfect for unloading cargo. Tales are still told of how the whole community came together to outwit the authorities. One tells of a woman who, when raided by the customs officers, hid a keg of alcohol under her skirts. Another ingenious lady who lived at one of the houses up at Old Saltburn, when the door knocked and the police came in searching for smuggled goods, she picked up her contraband, she wrapped it in her child's clothes, she cradled it like a baby and walked straight past the police out of the house and no one stopped and questioned her. But undoubtedly the most notorious of all the smugglers who lived here and worked out of Old Saltburn was John Andrews and he was the landlord of that pub right there in 1780. John Andrews' family were wealthy and well connected and in Saltburn he was a respected member of the community. As landlord of a pub with direct access to the sea, what better place than to coordinate the area's smuggling trade? But John Andrew decided to go one better. He actually started making the goods he would then smuggle. He went into partnership with a local brewer and from here, contraband began spreading across the UK. His granddaughter christened him King of the Smugglers and he actually came close to being arrested on a number of occasions. So John Andrew needed a plan. What better one than to combine being one of the area's most prolific criminals with a position in the branch of the local militia, which conveniently were occasionally called upon to help the customs officers in their pursuit of smugglers. But just as Saltburn's reputation for being the Moss Isley of Great Britain was reaching its heyday, a young man named Robert Stevenson, who lived oh, about 60 miles in that direction, was in the process of developing the world's first railway and in turn the world's first passenger railway and that very first line finished about 20 miles in that direction. Now the family he was working with to build that railway were coal magnets. They were called the Pease family, specifically Henry Pease. And it wasn't very long before the Pease family decided to extend that line up the road to their favourite holiday destination, Saltburn. And it was the arrival of the railway here and at sleepy villages across the country that transformed their communities completely. The days of smuggling and piracy were over. Saltburn would become a Victorian holiday hotspot. But I think it's time for me to find my co-host and see if she's found somewhere perfect for a little knit. Yeah, we have spoken of this before, knitting on the beach. How, did we say it was horrible? Uh, well, I don't know if we've passed a judgment. <laughs> this is our moment to pass a judgment. Uh, when was the last um, time you knit on the beach? Probably the last time we were here, actually. I didn't, when we were in Scotland, I don't, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty well, you did. We took a chair. Oh, we did. I did do a little bit. You're right. So that was last summer. Right. But I didn't do a lot. The, the yarn management is a challenge, isn't Yeah, it? because it's not very blowy today, and yet... Mine's you, still blowing like mine's an blowing. absolute windsock. Mine's blowing too, and I find that really annoying. Right. I don't know, there's no, this is a pebbly beach, but there is sand over there, and I think the mixture of sand and knitting. You do have to say, though, with regards to places to knit around here, there are quite a few, because 
all the way along that pier over there. Yeah, there's, there's benches. benches yeah. And you could totally be sat there, couldn't you? Yeah. Going for it. Yeah. And similarly, there's benches all the way along this seafront, which you could totally just be, be sat there and having a nip. Okay. Yeah. Quite often we do that, don't we? We throw the rug over a bench. We do. Rather yeah. Rather than and. I mean, I suppose you could even bring chairs down. You could. People have done that. Yeah, you could. Absolutely. That gentleman over there looks like he needs some sun cream. I know. There's a man over there, and his back is absolutely bright red. I feel like going over to him and saying, "Look, you need to put something on that because that's going to be sore." You're going to feel it later. So, My goodness. So we've established that there are most certainly spaces where you can knit. But it's not a particularly relaxing or pleasant place to knit. I've it got isn't. To say. It isn't relaxing. It isn't pleasant because you just literally. You probably heard somebody come trundling literally within like six inches of my feet. You know, walking past when there's loads of space and they don't need to do that. But you know, people. I don't know. I don't know whether when they're on the beach they don't think about other people's personal space or what. But no, I don't find it very relaxing at all. We've got to score it. Got to score it. I mean, I out of we need to score it out of ten. And um, this is for knitability, and I, I wouldn't choose to knit on the beach. I've got to say, I wouldn't there are spaces to knit, to on knit the beach. which no. you know, and there's lots of options because I can see benches that are free now. So you yeah. could you could easily sit and do yeah, it. So yeah. I mean, is it a six? Oh no, I wouldn't have even given it a six. I was thinking four. So do you want to go five then? Okay, okay, yeah, because I mean that then straddles the the fact that we clearly just don't enjoy knitting on a beach. No. With the fact that there is, you know, the facility to knit on the beach. You can't really get off into a zone. Can no, you? you can't at all because you know you can just hear everybody's conversations and you know it, it's just not my thing. No, I think you're right. So I'm going to put my knitting away. I don't yes. want any more sand in my skein of yarn. <laughs> Thank you very much. Neil, questions still remain and I want some answers. Like who was Lily Langtree and what she got to do with this house? And who built this rather lovely pier? We'll find out all this and more when we see you later in the show for part two. Yes! Oh my goodness. Honestly, I've waited 25 years to get up there because rape has always been in that field. So it was like a glowing cliff top. Yeah. And I had no idea until we researched this episode of New Adventures that sat right there was a Roman signal station. Mm. Unbelievable. And I think it's fascinating to think that signal stations then led to Morse code, mm -hmm. which then led to telegrams, which led to telephone, and led to the internet. Gosh. And, you know, it all started mm. thousands of years ago. It's the Romans' fault. Well, it was probably... I was going to say that, but I bet you they picked it up off the Greeks or something. Oh, I bet you. Because, yeah. the, the, I mean, the Romans tended to assimilate, like, like what were they called? Was it the Borg? Yeah, it was. The Borg on... The resistance is futile. That's Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. The uh, Borg assimilate. Not really a Trekkie. No, me neither. But I, I don't mind who's got this. You like the new films. I like the new films, yeah, you but do. I'm not like a Uber fan or anything. Chris Pine is... Oh, he's excellent. Yeah, he is, yeah, because yeah. he's just like... He's just Shatner. like William Shatner, yeah. Yeah, and Bones, actually, Carl Urban. He's very good as well. He is, he yeah. is. I mean, the, the whole thing, I think, is, is really, really well put together. Really, I like Star Trek. I'm not into the kind of... Generation-y ones. I really like those. Um, Picard was great. And, I and don't, well, I never really know. watched them. They, but I mean, they look so dated now. I do think yeah. it's funny that the old ones with William Shatner actually look, look less dated. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think that's yeah. because in their day, they had to use real things. So the effects Tribbles. were all real. I'd love a real triple. Yeah, yeah. Oh. whereas in next generation they were using very sort of early mm -hmm. computer mm -hmm. stuff which looks just, which can look more data can't it, it does, than it does. really old stuff yeah did you notice that the I, I can't remember if, it, if it's in part one or part two but look out for the cool yarn shop i think it was in part one you go back and just have a little look i just snuck in hopefully we'll be featured well i asked 
Angela, and she said she was well up for it, uh, ripping yarns. He went in a yarn shop and didn't bring me any oh, yarn. Oh, crumbs. Mm. And also, if anyone is looking at my shirt and wondering why he's got change for part two, it's because she spilt her drink all down my top. Goodness gracious me. But... I'm changed, saying nothing. Change. Say nothing and cash It was on. an accidental spillage. <laughs> How funny. Do not miss part two. Will we get fish and chips on a beach for the first time? You'll have to tune in later mm. to find out. Because right now, and there's a few, there it's is. time for us to find out. Kay Jones, what's off your needles? I do have a few things. You do. And Surprising. I have some a surprising few things and you've got something as well yeah i'll start with the thing that i finished first right. so let's go in that order. chronological order yes yes and i finished my fluffy pink not mine but i finished the fluffy pink mittens lovely job and look they match every i'm totally coordinated today yes aren't i and these are the world's simplest mittens from by tink and knits who are featured in the next issue of knitability which is out next friday so yeah, look. Oh, aren't they lovely? They're so fluffy. They're cosy, aren't they? They are really. Can you see the fluff if I hold it like that? You can look. Oh, it looks like a little puppet. It's like a little puppet. Hello. Um, yeah, so lovely. <laughs> you nutter. <laughs> oh, lovely mittens finished. To add to the gift pile, I say pile, it's not very big at the minute. I've got, this is the third pair, I think. It's not really even a mound, Amazing. isn't it? Amazing. Yeah, it's just a small amount of a mittens. Slight hump. But look, it, I've done three pairs of mittens and it's May. So by the end of the year, even if I've only got half a dozen pairs of mittens, that's No, still, you'll have at least ten done. That's still that'd be still be like six presents that I don't yeah. have to buy, wouldn't yeah. it? Which is brilliant. Yeah. So fantastic knit, didn't have any problems with the pattern, really well written, very clear and straightforward. Um, and I used a DK which I dyed myself, doubled with some Rowan Kid Silk Haze. Oh, now that's a wonderful idea. <laughs> it takes the mickey out of me all the time for doing that. And I've still, do you know, I've still got an urge to do a pattern with Rowan Kid Silk Haze being involved. So that might be in the cards, aren't they? They're just, look, can you imagine holding my hand? I can't keep them. No. Even gift. though they're my sort of lovely... Gift them, baby. ...colour that I like. So yeah. that's the first thing I finished. Ask me. Dan Jones. Yes. What's off your needles? Well, that was very high. Look, I finished some checked and squared socks. Yay. And I did the umbrella toe, and I put in an eye partridge heel, yeah. which came right down for me in my lovely book. And I used the checked and squared stitch pattern, which I learnt last year when I did the Dan and Lara project. And they're lovely. And they are, and the yarn is a lovely one that you dyed up for me. On the sport weight Yes, place. and the second sock took forever. It, it did, was like purgatory. It? It <laughs> Just finish. Just end. This stitch pattern looks great, and it, it wears really nicely, and it looks really good, but it's actually like knitting a sock of ribbing. It is. It's just... Knit so, two, it's knit two, pearl two, pearl two, knit two. <laughs> I so, don't enjoy that. It, I think you found it a bit tedious, didn't you? Yes. So I'm glad I knitted it a second time because knitting it the first time I finished it and I thought, that's great. I really like that. I'll knit that again. I don't think I'll knit this again, to be honest. No. Or, you know, I would come back to it if it was requested, but I don't think it's not a very pleasurable stitch pattern, mm. being mm. completely honest. But the first pair I knit are greatly loved. Mm -hmm. They've worn really well and everything's great. I had a major gauge issue on really, my second sock. Really, really, really. But I'm now weird. addressing that. that wasn't I'm going my back to Mr. Tight Knitter and I'm going to stick with what well, I've been. I, I, better, that, that's a better way to be, I think, a yeah. tight knitter than a really loose knitter. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm oh, going well, to do. Well, going from tight to loose, partway through a pair of socks, is not the ideal, really. but... Anyway, but there they're, they are. they're fine. They are fine. They are fine. And glad to have finished them because I know Bryony really wants them. Mm. So lovely. She can have them now. She can have them. Yes. What else have you finished? The next thing I finished was another block in my next stitching time. I won't say blanket and I'll explain why in a minute. But my next stitching time project, let's say it that way. And I've done this gorgeous purple one. Isn't it lovely? Oh, I love this. I think it's so nice. And I use, this one was Martin's Lab, a single ply yarn. 
Martin's Lab. Is Martin's that... Lab. He's What's... the he's the husband of a designer. I should link it anyway. Yeah, I can't remember notes. her name. I can't remember her name, but I'm sure he's the husband of a really quite well-known knitting designer. And he dies young. And he dies young, yeah. Right. And then this one, I died actually. This was in my advent calendar last last year. This one. This one was Sarah's Texture Crafts, who Sarah doesn't die any longer, which is very sad. I think she developed a wool allergy. Oh, yeah. I know. Can you imagine that as a as a dyer? I mean, that's pretty tragic, isn't it? How awful. Um, so that was a 20 gram mini from that. And then this one, I think, is Beehive Yarns. I ordered a set of minis recently, and I'm pretty sure that that was Beehive Yarns. And that's beautiful. I love how that knit up. Really lovely. So that's another one done. Nice. Yay. And I'm on to, I'm doing one right now, which is peach. Oh, seriously, I've got to get over this peach stage. Why? I don't know. Just embrace it, well, enjoy it. Well, I am at the moment. The Everything thing. I'm doing seems to be peach. Well, so. that's fine, isn't it? There's so no that's laws the against next. peaches. Although I don't like eating peaches. I prefer a nectarine. I prefer nectarines too because oh, it's too crisper. Juice. Yeah. yeah. With a peach, it's like runs all down your face. And yeah, you need to stand in the bath to eat it. I tend to, if I ever ate a peach, which we don't really eat peaches, do we? No, But no. I would cut it up into pieces and then just eat the pieces. I remember going on holiday and there would be, all the way through France and into Spain, there would be farmers' wives right. at the side of the road. Selling peaches. Selling peaches, nectarines, all sorts. Right. And the, the peaches, you, you, you were sort Covered. of cleaning yourself up. I know, because they're sticky as well. Because they're sticky and it? then it's a hot country, so you oh, end up just yeah. a sticky mess. I have to. I'm not a... Whenever I eat fruit, I tend to like to cut it into pieces and eat it in pieces. I'm not a biting into apple type person at all. You're I'm, not a biting into anything type no, person. No, I'm not. I don't like biting into things. Which is just <laughs> a bit weird, isn't it? Just a weird thing. Yeah. What so, else? What else? Is off your needles. Now, the reason I said Stitching Time Project is because, if you remember, I had another Stitching Time blanket on the go. The movie blanket, the film blanket, favourite films blanket. And I was having a bit of sort out the other day and I pulled it out of the bag and I folded it and put it down. And then all of a sudden I thought, oh my word, folded, that looks like it's exactly the right size to be a cushion. It's fate. It was fate. So yes, I've made another blanket in progress into another cushion. And I posted a picture on Instagram actually a couple of days ago, so you might have seen this already. Uh, but it just made me laugh that I've, I've done it again. And when actually I look back and I said, I said to Bryony, let's gather all these cushions together. I've, I've made five. So here it is, if you remember, this was the favorite films blanket cushion. that's now a cushion. Do you know, I think it's totally fine to do that. Much more appropriate, because, to be honest, because you're more likely to sit on a cushion watching I the know. film. I know. Well, the thing is, this was sat in a project bag, and I've had it on the go for two years now. Oh, that's disgraceful. And almost two years. And for me, that's just too long. And yeah. I hadn't hadn't knit a block for a good while. And again, that's another indication that maybe, you know, move on type thing. And because it was a perfect size to just sew up and pop a cushion inside, then... It, yeah, like Dan said, it was fate. So we've got Toy Story here, Finding Nemo, Dory, whichever. And then Wizard of Oz, Muppets Christmas Carol. And then on the other side, we've got The Force Awakens, Harry Potter, Bedknobs and Broomsticks, and Frozen. And it is another thing, you know, that's out of the the pile of, you know, I say pile, I've not got that many, but it's no longer a work in progress, which I think for me is a great thing, especially yeah. when it's been on the go for two years. That's Absolutely. just, for me, it's long enough. I need to move on and get on with something, get on with another. Finished and, and Stitching time used. project that will probably become another cushion. But you know what? That's fine. And even if I run out of spaces to put cushions, I can then start giving them to people, can't I? Yeah. As gifts, because they make, they make great great gifts. My mum would love one, I know, yeah. and your mum would probably love a couple. Yeah, 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 um, definitely. So, and then the final thing that I finished is, oh, this is so cute. How can I show him to his best ability? Oh, it's a girl, actually. How can I show her? Oh, hello. Oh, I'm a cute sausage dog. <laughs> How sweet is this? Look at my cute eyes. Oh, I've got big ears. <laughs> this is a new pattern from lovely Susan Claudino, and it's called Rusty the Rocket Dog. 
and it's based on the dog that Michelle from former Dancing Dog Dye Works, she's now Lucky Dog Yarn Company, she's got a sausage dog called Rusty and he's based, this little dog is based on that and you, you can buy kits in Michelle's shop I believe to knit it in her yarn and her yarn, the, the pattern is actually written for a worsted weight but I knit it in four ply because I wanted a teeny version of it rather than, I don't know, I just wanted a teeny version. I think it's mainly because bryony has got that many toys now that we just don't have the capacity for bigger toys and plus it's just cute. So I used black as swan. And plus, it's the correct scale. Look, yeah, look. For Mr. Bakery Bear. He's got a dog. Oh, it's his pet dog. Brian, Jasper. Jasper. No. Oh, sorry. Bryony called, Bryony called her Gwen. After Did, Gwendolyn Christie. After Gwendolyn Christie. Yeah. <laughs> who Captain plays Phasma. Captain Phasma, if you don't know, in Star Wars. So she's called Gwen. And I used Black as Swan, Falkland Island, the, the four ply yarn. This is one of the colours which is this beautiful green. Bryony chose the colours, I brought a load downstairs because I've got lots of colours in the four ply because this is one of my absolute favourite yarns, I, I love it. I've done two designs, two of my designs are knit with this exact yarn. It's just beautiful, it's soft and squishy, it's a non-superwash yarn but it's beautiful. So the, the dog colour is sorrel which I think is a discontinued colour now and then this one is balsam bog which although it's not a very pretty name actually it's a beautiful colour and it looks like exactly what it is it does I looked up it's a plant on the Falkland Islands and I looked up the colour and it's exactly like this it's this kind of slightly chartreuse green I would say and it's got tones I mean even in just the little jumper you can see there are tones of colour in there it's just beautiful yarn. I did make this project more difficult for myself by knitting it in a four ply and I knit it at a really tight gauge. I used 2.5 millimetres which for a four ply would normally you would think that that would be okay but this is really I don't I never think of this as a four ply I think it's more like a sport weight it's so plump and I think yardage wise you get 175 metres for 50 grams so yardage wise it is a fingering I would say but I think because it's so lofty that sort of plumps it up so I did find it really difficult going on 2.5 millimeters and I was going to pull it out and knit it on bigger but I really like how tight the gauge is you know you can't see any stuffing at all oh look she's looking at you there oh I'm so cute so Susan I love it it's super sweet and Bryony loves her as well and she did get her straight away I haven't I haven't withheld the sausage dog from her so there we go all done yes lovely what a wonderful effort for episode 100 well thank you very much congratulations well that's very kind of you and not a hint of sarcasm there <laughs> the suspense is killing me I want to find out if we're going to get fish and chips so I think we should head straight back to us back on the cliffs in Saltburn Welcome back to the cliffs overlooking Saltburn. And in 1859, a man and his brother were walking along this path and they decided to just take a rest right here. Now, they weren't taken with old Saltburn, which is directly below me, because these guys were Victorians and they thought big. One of those Victorian men was Henry Pease and his view that day would have looked something like this. When he got home late for dinner that night, the excuse he gave to his wife was a bit of a cracker. He told her, I saw a beautiful new town sat high upon the cliff. Below was a garden for everyone to enjoy, and there was a wooden walkway stretching out to sea for you to walk along. I shall build it for you. Two years later, Henry Pease's brand new town was open for business. This was the Victorian railway station built by Pease to welcome tourists to his new town. And Henry was a man of his word because here is the pier he promised his wife. But Henry had a problem. How would he transport his good lady wife from the cliff to his brand new seafront? 
with this rather rickety hoist. The structure was 120 foot high, it was made of wood, and it was secured in place with guy ropes. The tower was approached by a narrow walkway, and the cage was then raised or lowered by pouring water into or out of a tank, which counterbalanced its passengers. This was cutting edge Victorian engineering at its best. Except it wasn't. Within 13 years, it was condemned as unsafe and replaced with this, which has actually been here ever since. This is the oldest cliff lift of its kind in the country. Frustratingly, it's currently being renovated, but when it's running, two cars run up and down the tracks, taking passengers down to the beach in just 55 seconds. Now this really was cutting edge technology that stood the test of time, just sadly not today. <laughs> What of Henry P's walkway out into the sea? Well, here it is, I'm walking on it right now. Just 10 years after Henry Pease had sat on the cliff, envisaging his town, Saltburn Pier opened in May 1869, and it was an immediate success, with 50,000 visitors paying to stroll upon it in the first six months. It was built to an original length of 1,500 feet. There was a steamship landing at the head of the pier and two ships ran up and down the coast taking holiday makers on excursions. And at the top of the cliff, in pride of place, Henry Pease built a home for himself and his wife. And this is where our story gets a little bit royal. Welcome to the famous Teddy's Nook. Built as a holiday home for the Pease family, they would of course let it out to guests of a certain standing. By 1877, Saltburn was the place to be. Queen Victoria's son, Prince Edward, even frequented the town. He stayed here at the old Zetland Hotel so often, he had a suite of rooms permanently on standby for his arrival. Now, it would be fair to say the future King Edward VII was a little bit of a ladies' man. One of his many lady friends was the actress Lily Langtree, and between 1877 and 1880, they met regularly at the Pea's House on the Hill. It was conveniently placed not two minutes walk from the Zetland Hotel. And it was right next to the top of the funicular. So within moments, Lily and Edward could get down to the beach and they were often seen strolling along the seafront. Edward would go on to become king and Lily, one of the most celebrated actresses of her age. She was of course immortalised as the Jersey Lily in this painting by John Everett Millais in 1878. So in the space of just 20 years, Henry Pease, who'd sat on that hill over there, looking out onto the cliff and imagined his town, had realised his vision. And now it was attracting film stars and royalty. This truly was the Monaco of its age. But I need some food, and I know just the place to get it. And so we have found the perfect spot to sit and have a little chat about interestability. It is an in, it's a super interesting place. It's a shame today that the funicular's not there. Oh, I know. That's really disappointing. It should, have, it should be reopened. It should and, you be know, on the website, it's going to be open. They're renovating you know. it and it's not open, so that's a real shame. Real shame that's, that, 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 that's not there. But I can't think of another place with a pier mm. quite as nice as that. No, it's a lovely pier, yeah. And whilst the... Arcades are not what they were. 
gone are the days of Pac-Man and Space yeah, Invaders. Yeah, I know. Which were always such fun. I yeah. don't think that's particular to here, though. I no. think that's in general, isn't it? Do you remember Dragon's Lair? No. I, oh. I never used to play on those sorts of games. I just did two the... Two peas. Pushy... No, it was a penny when I oh, was little. Yeah. It's two peas now, isn't it? The pushy things that, yeah. honestly, you never win on, but... Prizes were, were pretty much the same, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, just, the sweets, just and sweets and little yeah. bits of things, yeah. Great. But none of that anymore. It's all no. sort of newfangled things, but... It's still the old Victorian, yeah. arc, you know, it, it, it's the, the building. Victorian building, it yeah. is, and it yeah. has got a real charm. I do prefer it here to Whitby. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Whitby is, um, Whitby is just too busy for me. And it hasn't... Um, does it really have a beach you can go and sit on, Whit Well, does it? It does. It does, it right, does. okay. I don't think of Whitby as being a beach place. It, it, I, I mean, think that's it, it probably does. because the town's right on the shore, isn't it? It so. is, it mm. is. And, you know, you've got to really sort of make an effort to get down there. Yeah. Here, you're parking straight on the beach yeah, and, yeah. and you're off. Yeah. And you are promenading along the promenade where the yeah. Victorians would off. True. So I, d I think that's the reason why I like the vibe, because it's got that... It's such a strong Victorian feel. And there are lots of historical signs down there too, there are, yeah. which, which I've noticed. Did yeah. you see any of those coming up? I didn't read them, but I saw them. Yeah, then. which I think is really good. So, you know, with, you could have a good day out here, couldn't mm. you? Anybody could. Yeah, yeah. Lots of places to get food, which we're going to go try in a oh, minute yes. as well. Yes. So lots of places to go get food, shops to buy, buckets and spades. Which we did. We yeah, did. Brian is very happy with a gigantic spade so and a bucket. She, she came out, I thought it was escape <laughs> to victory. It's I, this I, huge shovel. You could dig the garden with it. It's brilliant though, it's like a wooden shovel thing. I am not, I have no issues with that spade. No, it's a good the, spade. The spades that I hate are those plastic ones. Yeah, which just they bend. just snap and they bend and snap. I mean, yeah. this is really good hard plastic and a nice wooden shovel-y bit. Yes, yes. So interestability, I think it's got to score high. Do you? Well, you clearly don't. Well, it's just difference in opinion, isn't it? Um, I'd probably go seven. I think that's probably about right, you know. If we compare it to the other places where we've been to in the series, mm. it's certainly nowhere near as nice and as interesting as Lau there. No. And um, it's nowhere near as interesting as York. No. So, you know, I think seven is a generous score. Yeah. But I think it's fair. Yeah. So we'll go with a seven. Picnicability, folks. Now, um, there is lots and lots of opportunity to have lovely picnics here. Yes. Yeah. Because, you know, you could be sat out on the beach on a rug like yeah. we are now, yeah. or there's a restaurant and it's as good a fish and chip restaurant as I've seen yeah. or there's takeaway as well yeah. and we've had some beautiful fish and chips yeah. really really nice and there's nothing better I think I wonder why that is fish and chips at the seaside yeah. no I mean it, they just taste different don't they at the seaside I don't know why that is salt air maybe it must be who knows it must be it's yeah. got to be hasn't it with regards to picnic ability I think you know score wise well I'd probably eight? go with an eight yes yeah. yes yeah. definitely so Eight and seven is 15. Yeah. Plus five is 20. It's not bad. It's not bad, but not no, great. No, not great. But probably fair. Yeah, I probably think it's fair. fair. Yeah. A really interesting story here. So I guess it must have been the aeroplanes and sort of package holidays that really put paid to seaside holidays. It, uh, absolutely. You, yeah. You're exactly right. The streets that once bustled with holiday makers. stand eerily quiet. Saltburn's decline actually began during the Second World War. Holidays to the beach had become much less popular, largely due to the fears of impending invasion. It was these fears that also led to the shortening of the pier. If steamers could land and unload passengers, troop transport ships could do the same. So it went from 1,500 feet to 681 feet, and it's stayed that length ever since. But it was the disappearance of the tourists from this once busy Victorian promenade that hit the town the hardest. They'd arrived in force in 1861, and within a hundred years, they'd gone catching planes to Europe instead of coming here to the northeast coast of England. And with the disappearance of the tourists, the Zetland Hotel had no customers. A hotel which had once welcomed royalty closed its doors forever.
But after many years of bad news, suddenly there was some good. Because unlike so many seaside resorts, at least Saltburn's railway line stayed open. And perhaps that's what saved it. Because in the last 20 years, thousands of pounds have been spent on renovating the seafront. From posh restaurants listed in the top 20 seaside eateries in Britain, to a state-of-the-art lifeguard station. The investment has brought back some of the tourists and offered a glimmer of hope to the residents of this once thriving town. And so ends our adventure from the Romans arrival up there on the cliff top from its years of smuggling and skullduggery. To its 19th century heyday with world-leading innovations. Saltburn's golden Victorian age may be over. But what a stunning town they left behind for us to explore. We'll see you next time for more new adventures of the Bakery Bears. Woohoo! That was cool. Wonderful to go and re-explore places, which I knew so well when I was young. And actually, I was looking for a book, and I'll see if I can find it, and I'll show it on, because I'm sure it's somewhere. I will show it on the after show party on Sunday, because my trip to Saltburn was a really important one for me in, in my mm, growing up. Mm. There was some sort of tricky times at, at home going on. My, my mum and dad got divorced mm. and it, my mum took me up there and it, it, my mum's best friend is the most amazing lady and her husband, who unfortunately isn't with us anymore, he was the coolest guy in the history of the world. He used to live in this house at the top of the cliff in Saltburn, along with my mum's best friend. and. Cows used to get, it was backed out mm, to a cow's field. You showed me the house, yeah. And cows used to come up really close to the house and they would start eating his roses and, and having a go at his garden. So he set up this slingshot <laughs> and he had he had pellets. And if a cow got too close, he'd go out and he'd, he'd, he'd ping it with a tiny stone and the cow would like run off. And he taught them not to come near his house. It was really cool. But also, he taught me. And um, you know, this particularly point poignant because I can't really eat bread anymore, but he taught me how to make triple decker sandwiches. Wow. I'll never forget this. It's like a club. No. Uh, no, 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 no. You know, he taught me about how you know you could make the perfect sandwich by adding an extra layer. So so you know, I remember it vividly. I remember being stood in his kitchen and he got out everything. I mean, what a perfect sort of rite of passage for a young boy. Get the bread out, first slice on. Butter, a bit of lovely ham, uh, and then he put something else on as well. I can't remember what it was. It might have been tomato. No, yeah, I think it was tomato. Yeah, ham and tomato. Yeah. On the top with the next piece of bread, and I thought, right, Sam is ready. Oh no, no, he then buttered that. Yes, it's a club. Got it. Call it what you want, woman. I don't call that a club sandwich. A club sandwich. Has in like it's, chicken and bacon. Yes. yeah. There was no yeah. bacon or chicken filling. in this. The construction is the same. Then I don't care. Same. This is Bill's triple decker sandwich. You call it what you like. Mm -hmm. So he then gets out the most amazing local cheese, slices that, and I'm like, what's going on? This is it's magic at work. Put cheese on the top, and then he got out this really tangy pickle. Oh, lovely. Put that on the top. Another one, sliced it up, and I'm like, this is going to taste weird. It was amazing. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But then to top it off, the next day we go out, what does he do? He gets out a metal detector, gets out this book, a buried treasure, and we go down on the beach, the beach which we've just taken you to, and he's there giving right. it this, looking for stuff. Did we find anything? No, no we did not. But
But did I have a cool time? Oh yes, I did. And what did Bill do? He's called Bill. What did Bill do at the end of the day? He gave me the book. Aww. And I had the book. I've, well, I've still got it now. And I'm sure he said to me, I'll lend it to you. Aww. And unfortunately... Well, I'm sure he want, would have wanted you to have it. Well, it's now, it, it's a treasured... Considering it's buried treasure. The book's from 1912. Lord, yeah, I, mean. I remember looking at it thinking, oh my goodness, I mean, this is really cool. I need to find it. I'll put it somewhere. Do you do this? Do you put it somewhere, put it somewhere. for safekeeping? And then you can't find it. No. That is the end, obviously, of episode three. And now it's time to get excited for episode four. And I am excited because we specifically structured this series of new adventures to gradually pick up pace. Mm. The next episode, my one true love, you and I, yeah. in, in episode 102, yeah. you and I are going to Braveheart's Manor House. Oh, We're yeah. going to that castle not far from the, the, the Roman city that we went to. Oh, I don't remember. It's two minutes up the road from there. We'll be exploring Braveheart's Manor House because oh. in episode 101, yeah. the pudding club is back. Ooh. And is it Eve's pudding? I've no idea. That's Which one, one was Eve's pudding? Isn't that the one with the jam on the bottom and the sponge on the top? Oh, that looked good. Yeah, and then you have it with custard. Oh. But there was another one that had apples that looked really good. We'll do that the time after. Which was apples on the bottom and then sponge on the top. Right. Oh, well, you could oh, just mix and match, couldn't you? No. No. Well, maybe it is just apples. Uh, but no, I remember but having rasp. No, rasp Eve's pudding. pudding is something different. I was thinking, the apple thing is something different. Oh, okay. But well, that's I, fine I then. Do, I don't mind. Do both. Do both? Not in the same episode. Oh, gosh. Oh, goodness. Does anyone else get confused listening no, to him? Or is no it just one else a, does. I think it can just be me. Honestly. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, for us to do our hundredth episode Endy Bits. Oh, Endy Bits. Yes. I've only really got one thing to talk about. Okay. And that's the Summer of Sorcery knit along. Oh, it's getting closer. First of June, it start it starts. We spoke about it on the last episode, but since then I've had lots of lovely prizes oh, arrive. Show some? So I thought I would show you oh. and just let you know so far what prizes I've got. And I've got you know, there's quite a lot now, and if I've got a few more coming on the way, so I am good for prizes right now. So thank but you so re much. But remember, everyone. remember, we also have, uh, we, we've got to do, and I think we're going to have to do it next time because it's just going to be so busy in the the show and the pop show oh, on Sunday. Prizes for yeah, the... but we'll, we'll do it in the next one. Right, okay. We won't do it this one. We'll do it next time. Yeah. Okay. Because you know, after show party time, people. Okie dokie. So I just thought I've got a little box here, a very sophisticated cardboard box with the, the prizes in. I just considering how many baskets on. you possess, I'm still. It's pretty that you... shameful that I'm having to use cardboard box, isn't it? Really, when I do have several baskets, but you know, it's serving a purpose it and is. it's absolutely fine. So I'll show you what I've got so far. I've got a number of patterns, and I'll just run through those. We've got a pattern that's called the Pearl Kitty Sock Club, and that's an ebook, and that's from Mary. She's lights on on Ravelry. We've got a pattern from Madeline Windsor, lovely Madeline, called the oh Madeline, I'm so sorry. Cool Lithin. Cool Lithin shawl. I'm so sorry. It's a beautiful shawl pattern. We've then got a pattern by Jen Sheelan, which is called Queen of the Castle, and it's a jar cover. You know, you put a tea light in the jar Ingenious. and then you knit the cover. It's a really pretty lacy pattern. There's a pattern from lovely Barbara, Knitting I Love, and she sent us the Asphodel. Asphodel. I'm terrible. Asphodel hat, which is based on Harry Potter. And then we move on to, is that all of the patterns? Oh no, we've got another one from um, Naomi. I can never say, is it Naomi or Naomi? Well, I'd go with Naomi. Naomi who's Cozy Cute Knits, and she sent us the Only Way Is Up cowl Baby, pattern. For you. Really nice cowl with like lots of texture, really lovely, with mini skeins, I think it was. And then, yeah, so that's all the pattern prizes. Was that the communards? Who did the Only Way Is Up? Was that no. a man or a woman? Bron it wasn't Bronski Pete. Oh no, hang on. No, it's a woman. Was it? Uh, yeah. I, knew, I could see the communards guys it's singing It's not it. the communards. Oh, the interesting. Isn't it? That's a debate for our... Isn't it a woman who's... Top of the box, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Right, so the, the prize, the actual physical prizes that I've got so far is I've got a beautiful bag from Leslie. Yes. Just Paul Lane. Legend. That is Leslie. Yeah, she's super lovely. And this is, it's a gorgeous bag. I've got one. Leslie, um, who used to take her children to Lair the Castle when they were growing did up. Did she really? She did. Wow. 
yes. that's fantastic. So a bag from Leslie. I'm trying not for these to make a noise. We've got another bag. That looks like Liberty fabric. It is Liberty fabric, and look that at me goes go with it. She told me before. I could not have identified Liberty fabric ever. A lovely bag made with Liberty fabric, and on the back, look, knitter. How sweet is that? This is from Homebird Makes, and that's Ali. She is Homebird Makes. Homebird Makes. Homebird Makes. Homebird Makes on Etsy. Oh, I'm terrible, aren't I? And she sent a beautiful bag, and she also sent this, and she said I could keep this if I wanted to, but I'm adding it in. And it's a lovely knitter banner, so you can hang that up in your craft room. Again, Liberty Fabric on the front, which is beautiful, so that'll be a prize together. We've then got a skein of yarn from Wishknits. This is wishknits.co.uk. Now this is the one, yes, sorry. You're probably gonna to have to do a bit of editing. No, I'm not, <laughs> I refuse. Do it slickly. This is terrible. It's awful, isn't it? When you've just got a lot of things all together and you're trying to remember which is which. Oh, honestly, I'm just shocking. So yes, wishknits.co.uk. Let, let me see that. Because that is clever. Because when I see that, I want to do this. It like bewitched. Yeah, I know. Da -da -da. Her writing is, is it unprinted that one? Yeah, look. <laughs> it looks like the writing on So when I do it, it just looks like I've got hay fever. Bewitched. And she sent a lovely skein of yarn, which is called Cups and Sorcery. Fingering weight, 75.25, and it's this beautiful pinks and purples. It's gorgeous. And there's also some stitch markers there. Beautiful. So lovely prize. And that's Abby at Wishknits. Abby actually gave us a coupon code as oh, well. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, Abby. So if you want to go over to wishknits.co.uk, you can use the coupon code BBSOS, uppercase, and that will get you 15% off. And that's good until the end of August. Cool. So that's really kind. Thank, Thank you so much, Abby, for that. And it's a beautiful skein of yarn. It really is. And then we've got, this is from Fairy Realm Yarns. Be beautiful name. Beautifully think... enunciated as well by you. Yeah, I'm trying you not very... to... <laughs> I'm trying not to fluff my lines. I just feel like I'm making a complete hash of all You're words turning over a new today. leaf, are you, from episode 100 onwards? Oh. Honestly. You've not bothered for the last 99 episodes, so I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I take this abuse, quite frankly. Fairy Realm Yarns. Did I say that better? Yes, lovely. Right. It's a lot more natural. And I've, <laughs> I've got some lovely stitch markers they, there. They are nice. They are very pretty. Yeah. And some minis. These are super lovely. And stitch markers are inside the pretty little pink bag. So gorgeous. Fairy Realm Yarns. And then we've got a skein of yarn from me. I say that and Lovely. It doesn't sound very exciting, does it? But when I dyed up my last batch of this colour, I kept a skein out because it's always a really popular colourway, this one. And I thought it's kind of got a magical name. Yeah. It's Water Sprite. And this is on the Hardwick base, which is the one with Silver Stellina. So this is Water Sprite from me. So that's all the prizes and, I've got so far. I and didn't, finally, we got this who box. Who would like a box from DHL? You know, I'm DHL donated us this I'm box. I'm so, so kind, aren't I? That's gosh, I can't believe it fits on your head. Something that oh. actually fits on your head. Right, so that's all the prizes. Look, it, you can give it out, can't you? I can you take, can't it. take it. I can take it. Is that everything from you? That's all the prizes I've got so far. There are a few more on the way. So nothing I will from let, you. Nothing from you. I will let you know and show you those when they arrive. So, a lovely mountain of prizes for the knit along. I'm so excited that we've got so many beautiful yeah. prizes. So, thank you to everybody who has contacted me about prizes. It's really, really kind of you. So, here endeth the lesson. <laughs> Something I used to say very early on for a little short amount of time and people used to, to like it. I don't even remember Yeah, yeah, it's a long time ago, it's a long time ago. All these things being reminded of over the last couple of weeks. So folks, it's the end of episode 100. Thank you so much for everything so far. 
Thank you for being with us through Absolutely. the ups and, and through the, the many downs. Many and, downs. you know, <laughs> next episode, we start a whole new chapter. And thanks to all of you, it's going to be an unbelievably exciting one because we have so much in store. It's just going to be amazing. We do. And that starts with our after show party for patrons on Sunday at 2 pm. Yeah, I've got British to make a cake. Have, I'm planning what exciting cake to make. I can't wait. I know. It's going to be delicious. The next knitability is out next Friday. So that oh, means is it really? you'll have to write an article. Okay. <laughs> Everyone has got their articles in on time, apart from two people. That's me <laughs> and you. He'll say to me, like, you know, I need an article for such a day, and I'll write it in my planner, and like, right, okay, and then I'll leave it, and then I'll leave it, and I'm like, when do you need that for? <laughs> Yesterday. It's like, well, it'll be fine if it's such a time, I'm right, okay. What's the absolute latest? <laughs> I'd be terrible, wouldn't I, if I had to yes. put articles in with a deadline. It's only because it doesn't come naturally to no, me, I think. No. So we will be back in two weeks with episode 101. Yes. I'd like to see you all knitting yeah. your Dobby socks. That would be so cool. They're so cute. Oh, I need to find four books. So time to turn the page and start that next chapter with more quiz shows, more new adventures, more cookery, more knitting, more, and, and who knows what else? Who knows what else is just around the corner? Thank you so much, folks. And we'll Thanks, see you everybody. in two weeks for more. in a castle watching the bakery bears It never feels like a hassle to sit and watch the bakery bears What's on your shelf or what's in your oven or maybe a show you'll want to wear So sit yourself right down in the 